In this video, I am going to investigate the convergence of this series, whether it converges or not. Uh, the series is summation n is equal to 1 to infinity 2 over n plus n squared. And I'm going to go ahead and use integral test to find out whether the series converges. Now, let's define a function that's going to be confirming to the series. So let's define this function f of x is equal to 2 over x plus x squared. And we're going to define this function on this domain. Let's call it d from 1 to infinity. Why do we define it on 1 to infinity? Because the series goes from 1 to infinity and goes from 1 to infinity. Now, for this function, we can obviously see a n, the nth term of the series is 2 over n plus n square, which is nothing but f of n. Now, in order to be able to apply the uh, integral test, we need to make sure that three conditions are satisfied. Continuity condition, function is decreasing, and the function is positive on the interval. So let's go ahead and see if all three are true. So number one, continuous. Is the function continuous on the interval 1 to infinity? The answer is obviously yes, right? We don't have to worry about dividing by zero or anything, and the denominator is always positive. So sure, continuous, yes. How about number two? Is it positive? Of course it is positive. 2 over x plus x squared is always going to be positive on the interval 1 to infinity. Yes, so that is also yes. And number three, is it decreasing? Okay. Uh, of course the function is decreasing as well. As you can see, 2 divided by x plus x squared. As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, 2 over x plus x squared gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So all three conditions are satisfied. Therefore, we can use the integral test. When you are applying integral, integral test, make sure that you check all three conditions. Uh, if two of them applies, the third one doesn't, then you can't apply or... Uh, another way of saying the same thing is that all three conditions have to be true before you can apply the integral test. So let's go ahead and find the integral of this function on the domain. So from 1 to infinity, 2 over x plus x squared, which I could write it as limit t approaches infinity, integral 1 to t 2 over i could factor out an x times x plus 1 and of course there has to be a dx here and a dx here uh, so there is a little bit of side work that we have to do we kind of have to um, go ahead and break it out into two pieces okay what it is uh, use the partial fraction so 2 over x times x plus 1 is going to be, let's say, a over x plus b over x plus 1. And if I multiply both sides by x times x plus 1, on the left I'm going to get 2, and on the right I'm going to get a times x plus 1 plus b times x, if I simplify it further, it's going to give me um, a plus a plus b times x. Now, if I compare the coefficients uh, on both sides, I can see obviously that a is equal to 2 because a is the constant term. So a is equal to 2. And of course, a plus b has to be 0 because there is no x term on the left, which is equivalent to saying 0 times x. So a plus b is 0. b is equal to 0. That implies that a is equal to, sorry, b is equal to negative 2. 
because b is equal to negative a. So that kind of brings it to uh, 2 over x times x plus 1 is going to be equal to 2 over x minus b is negative 2. So that's why the minus 2 over x plus 1. Now I can go ahead and take care of the integral first. So let's do this one. 2 over x times x plus 1 dx and that is going to be equal to integral. Uh, so let's take the 2 outside. dx over x minus integral. Again, let's take the 2 out. dx over x plus 1, right? Now, let's simplify it. It's going to be 2 times ln of x minus 2 times ln of x plus 1. I don't need to use the absolute value sign here because x is uh, greater than or equal to 1, so it's positive. So this is going to be the same as 2 times ln of x minus ln of x plus 1, which by, the, by using the natural logarithm properties, we could write it as x over x plus 1. Now let's go ahead and plug in this value into the into here. So we are gonna get limit t approaches infinity, right? Um, integral one to t is gonna be this two times. Let's put a parenthesis here. Two times ln of x over x plus 1, okay, and you evaluate it from 1 to t. Now, if you simplify it, you are going to get the following limit t approaches infinity, right? 2 times ln of t divided by t plus 1, right, minus 2 times ln of 1 divided by 1 plus 1 or ln of 1 half. This is nothing but a constant, right? We could simplify that. Now, what happens to this guy? We have to investigate the behavior of ln of t over t as uh, t goes to infinity. So I could kind of... Uh, rewrite it a little bit, limit t approaches infinity, right? Let's take the two outside, ln of t over t plus one, I could write it as one over one plus one over t, all right? And this term doesn't have any uh, t involved, so I could just write it as two times ln of one minus ln of two because ln of 1 half is ln of 1 minus ln of 2. Now, as t goes to infinity, 1 over t goes to 0. So that means it becomes, it's approaching ln of 1, which is 0. So this whole thing is actually going to go to 0. And this is going to become, uh, ln of 1 is 0, right? So negative times negative is positive to ln of 2. So the integral actually is 2 ln of 2. So integral 1 to infinity 2 over x plus x square dx is equal to 2 ln of 2. Now this integral of course uh, converges. Uh, we found, that, found the integral to be 2 ln 2, right? Which is a constant. Since this one converges, so does the series. So the series summation, summation n is equal to 1 to infinity, 2 over n plus n square does in fact converge. I hope that this discussion was helpful. Thank you very much.